coming up in this episode of the Theme Park News Show. I share some awesome drone footage of a huge new roller coaster opening in Finland. I also share a POV of the new Yukon Striker at Canada's Wonderland, talk about Highlander that's opening this weekend at Hansa Park, and much more. It's Friday the 26th of April 2019, and this is the Theme Park News Show. I'm Sean Sandbrook and welcome to this week's episode. So yes, it's been a busy one for new vlogs on the channel over the past seven days. We've had four new vlogs go online from me and Martin's trip to Italy. We had a fantastic time and of course if you've not already seen them, check out the day one and day two vlogs from Gardaland. We then went to Italy in miniature for the first time and it certainly exceeded expectations. It was really good. And then of course we went to Mirabilandia for our first ever visit as well, where we share our thoughts on Catun and iSpeed for the first time. So make sure you check those out. Uh, there's new vlogs coming. In fact, another one tomorrow uh, from Blackpool Pleasure Beach. We filmed that last weekend at Late Night Riding. Obviously, I've just had that much stuff to put on from the Italy trip that I didn't put Blackpool on straight away. I wanted to keep stuff in order. Um, so yes, tomorrow is in Saturday. We'll have the vlog from Blackpool Pleasure Beach. And then coming up this week, new vlogs from Thorpe Park. Also from Alton Towers as well. And uh, yeah, fun fair vlog as well. So freshening it up with something a bit different. So make sure you stay tuned for those here on Theme Park worldwide. Anyway, we've got quite a lot of theme park news to talk about, been quite a busy one in the industry, so let's go straight in with news on the tracks. One of my most anticipated new rides of 2019 is Tiger at Linen Mackie in Finland. This looks absolutely incredible. It's an Intamin Blitz coaster and I've been following the construction all throughout the winter and the park have released over the past few days this new video, so I'll show it you on your screen. It includes a bit of ground footage there, uh, but most importantly some drone footage, aerial shots from above this new roller coaster. It's an Intamin Blitz opening this summer. As soon as they announce an opening date, I'll be going out there to ride it. Don't know if I'll be there opening day, it all depends on how cheap the flights are and whether I've got anything else on. However, at some point this year I will be going out to ride this. You can really see how the ride meanders around other attractions in the park. You can see how close the park is to other areas. I mean, I've never been here before, but you've got like a train line we're in at the back of the park there and other buildings around. Uh, it looks very similar to Liseberg actually in Sweden from what I can see there. Uh, and the scale of the ride looks incredible. The views are going to be great from it. It's got four inversions. Like I say, it's an Intamin Blitz. So it's towering at Fantasyland with inversions, basically. So I can't wait to ride this thing. The trains look awesome for it as well. And as soon as a confirmed date is announced, I will be going out there. There's a couple of dates about on the internet at the moment however I'm waiting for the park to officially announce it before I get anything booked to go over there but yes that's Tiger opening this summer at Linen Mackie in Finland Something that's open a little bit sooner, actually tomorrow, is at Hansa Park, and that's Highlander, which is the world's tallest and fastest gyro drop tower at 394 feet. Wow, it looks absolutely crazy. And again, I've been sharing some construction updates from this over winter, and mainly as the tower's gone up over the past sort of month or so. Um, but yes, Andy's over there at the moment. He's had a, done a massive Europe trip, and he sent me this footage just here of the ride testing. So thanks, Andy, for sending this one over. Unfortunately, he didn't get to ride it uh, because it's opening Saturday and he visited a couple of days ago. Uh, I thought he might get a soft opening. I was really having fingers crossed for him, but unfortunately he didn't get to ride it. But uh, here's a little bit of footage. And as you can see, there it is dropping down. Wow, it looks great, doesn't it? The, the brakes do start quite high up though, so I'm not sure about that. But the uh, seats do tilt, uh, which I'm sure will definitely add to the experience. But 394 feet, wow, it's going to be incredible. Uh, me and Harry Turnstiles are going to be out there in a few weeks' time. Uh, second week of May we're heading out there it's my birthday as well so we're going to Heidi Park to ride the new Colossus wooden coaster and also uh, go and ride Highlander as well uh, at Hansa Park in Germany. So uh, yeah, sorry Andy that you didn't get on it uh, but it looks like you had a fantastic trip anyway and of course thanks for sending me the footage. 
Another huge project that I'm really excited for in 2019 is the expansion of Europa Park with another huge new hotel and also Rulantica, the water park that's opening later this year. Uh, but yes, Kronosar is going to be opening next month, the 31st of May. I'm going to be there for the official opening night, so that's going to be great uh, to cover on the channel. I'm going to be staying over on that opening night and uh, can't wait to film a vlog, show you all the room and all the area around Kronosar. Uh, but here's some new pictures that have actually been released by Thomas Mack, obviously one of the Mack family that owns the park. And uh, yeah, you can really see the scale of this project, the bright colours, that huge outdoor area at the back where you've got a man-made lake. Uh, it looks perfect for a fountain show. I'm really sure it's going to come at some point, but there's no, I can't see any workings for it at the moment. However, you've got Rulantica, which is going to be just opposite. Uh, that's opening in November, so maybe they're still going to be putting a lot of finishing touches into that area at the back that looks over to the water park. Obviously, this hotel has got a bridge connecting Kronosar over to Rulantica as well. Um, so yeah, it looks awesome. I'll be staying there opening night, like I say, but uh, thanks to Thomas Mack for sharing those images. What are your thoughts? Have you been to Europa Park before? Would you like to go? Comment down below. There we are, it rhymes. <laughs> I thought that was planned. <laughs> Up next then, uh, we've got a bit of testing taking place on Mystic at Wallaby Roan Alp. Uh, this is the Gerstlau Infinity Coaster, again, that I've been covering a lot over winter. It feels like a lot of projects that I've been covering are all starting to wrap up now and construction's being completed, theming's being done and they're going to be opening soon so it's good to see. Uh, this is set to open in June 2019. Again a few pictures on your screen here. You can see how the ride's testing there uh, on the lift hill. You can see it making its way up, that vertical lift and also as well how the theming's coming together around the station area. Uh, looks like it'll be a great ride, expected to be around 53 miles per hour. Gerstlauer, you know, they are getting better. I'm not a massive lover of their coasters. However, after my visit to Hansa Park in a few weeks, maybe that might change because I'll be getting on Karnan and a few other rides there that I can't wait for. So uh, yeah, you know, fingers crossed I'm going to really enjoy them. And uh, like Gerstlauer, I've just never been a big fan of their rides, but I'm sure Mystic looks really nice as well with the colour scheme and things. Let's hope it rides well and bears up well over the years. Really hope so. Up next then to Yukon Striker at Canada's Wonderland. We've got a POV that has been released from the park. Their new B&M dive coaster. This is just a little bit special as it is of course the world's tallest dive coaster. Here's a look at the POV straight in there from the top. Uh, as we make our way down that drop. Whoa look at that. Uh, it opens on May the 3rd. We're going to be riding this in July as part of our road trip that starts in June. Uh, leading all the way through until uh, the 10th of July. Um, so yeah, we've got this big trip planned, of course, all around America and Canada uh, to go and visit Canada's Wonderland. It looks good from the POV, as you can see here. However, don't you think it looks quite slow in places? I, I assume this was a very early like test of the ride. I'm hoping it's been ruined a lot since then. It does look quite slow. And as you'll see now, the, the, the placement of the mid-course brake run is very interesting. I wish they maybe put the mid-course a bit earlier in the ride layout so it still had a bit more oomph around the rest of the layout because uh, it does look quite sluggish after that. But, you know, let me know your thoughts on it. Yukon Striker, 245-foot uh, drop straight down underwater uh, into a tunnel. Not physically into the water. It goes in a tunnel under the water uh, and it's got four inversions as well. So, like I say, I'll be riding this in July. Can't wait to experience it, but I can't help but feel it looks a little bit slow in that footage. A little bit of interesting news now from Eftaling in the Netherlands that has actually announced that it's going to be putting down its height restriction on Baron 1898, which is the dive coaster that opened in 2015. And now since the ride opened, the height restriction has been at 1.4 metres. That's like the standard for B&M roller coasters really across the world. I mean, most of them out there, you will find them at 1.4 metres. However, uh, the height restriction is now going down from the 1st of May 2019, so this week. Uh, it's going going down to 1.32 for Baron 1898. So this is very interesting, isn't it? Obviously the park haven't just done this off their own back. They've worked with B&M, the manufacturer, to, to come up with this. And yeah, I've turned to Family Park and I'm sure a lot of people are going to be very pleased uh, that they can take the kids now on Baron 1898. But yeah, it's gone down from 1.4 to 1.32. So this makes me wonder because Phoenix, you may remember, at Toverland, the height restriction has also gone down on that. 
uh, that's been recently lowered. So I think, you know, what something interesting going on here, because obviously both of these rides are in the Netherlands as well. Uh, you know, B&M are working with them. Could we maybe see more B&M coasters at other parks around the world lower their height restrictions? It would be interesting to see, wouldn't it? I mean, if Phoenix uh, has got a lower height restriction, can't the swarm at Thorpe Park? You know, that sort of style. So, I don't know, let me know your thoughts on that one. Of course, with height restrictions and anything like that, safety is paramount, but just thought it was an interesting one, an interesting sort of topic to talk about this week. Um, yeah, you know, it's happened on two B&M coasters now. Could we be seeing it happen anywhere else? Maybe Merlin owned quite a few B&M coasters. May they start to work with B&M to try and lower them height restrictions to get more people on? Who knows, it could be interesting, but there you go, that's going down from the 1st of May 2019, Baron 1898 in the Netherlands. Okay then, the final bit of news this week comes from Fantasialand. Got a bit of an update for you on Fly. What is believed to be the last track piece has now gone into place. Now I say what is believed to be, of course it's a very hard to see construction site. However, uh, there's a quite a few people saying this is definitely the last piece. There's a few people saying there's a couple of supports that haven't gone in yet. Um, just because of some of the groundwork taking place for the hotel. Um, but yeah, the, the track is mostly complete, if not fully complete now, uh, for Fly. So uh, it certainly looks interesting. You can get some good views of it from outside the park now. Uh, however, let's just talk a little bit about when we think this ride is going to open. I mean, there's a lot of people that still keep saying 2019. I don't know, I'm not in the know with it at all, you know, I, I'm still thinking 2020, uh, because you think, yes, the track's done, they've got to test the ride, they've got to put the trains on the track, uh, of course, get the ride testing, dummies and all that, and then they've got to complete all the theming around the ride, which is the big thing at Fantasyland, isn't it, the theming, and then, of course, they've got to build a hotel as part of the area as well, assuming that's going to open along with it, which I would say it would do as part of that whole experience, but... There you go, let me know your thoughts. Bit of an update on Fly. I know a few people have been asking in the comments what you know what's going on with Fly. So there you go. If you are going this year, I wouldn't expect to get on it. They might be try and get it open for the winter season, maybe, but me personally, I'd rather than get it right, open it for the start of the 2020 season. But we'll see what happens. We might get an announcement soon from the park. You never know. It's highly unlikely, but you never know. And uh, yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. It's now time for Where Am I? Where am I? Okay then, so where was I in last week's photo? Once again, I'll share it with you just here, zoomed in. That is what I showed you in last Friday's episode. Just a reminder, this is just for fun. You've got to comment down below where you think I am somewhere in or to do with a theme park. So the correct answer was, here's the zoomed out photo, there I am at Knott's Berry Farm outside Accelerator. And quite a few people did get this one right. A lot of people seem to remember me wearing that t-shirt next to a ride. Um, so yeah, I only wore it on that trip so there you go kind of gave it away a bit but well done to the people who got that one right gonna make it a bit harder again for this week so here we go here's another zoomed in image and all you've got to do by next friday is comment down below where am i and then of course next week's episode will be online at five o'clock fingers crossed <laughs> and uh, yeah i'll reveal exactly where i was So welcome to the final segment of this week's episode. It is your theme park moments. This is a segment where you can send in the pictures that you've had at theme parks, whether it's an on-ride photo, you standing out the front of a ride with a group of friends, or maybe you've met one of us at the theme parks. Uh, whatever it is, get them sent in to us, and uh, yeah, we'll put them in next Friday's episode. All you need to do is message them in to us on the official Theme Park Worldwide Facebook page and Instagram page. So get them sent in there. You can send them over either one. Charlotte will get back to you, and uh, yeah, we'll put them in next Friday's video. Let's get started then with the first photo just here from Lauren and Paul outside Wicker Man. And they got Francis with an apocalypse on ride photo just there. And they got Matthew on the swarm. And then we've got Lola Rose who had a photo with Charlotte. Next up, Owens had a picture with Alex just there. And then we've got Ben, Sam and Jacob at Paulton's Park. Another picture now from Paltons, and that's Megan, Imogen, and Lily. How awesome is the sign, though? It's great for photos, isn't it? Like that 3D effect. We've then got Ethan, who had a photo there with me. And then we've got Katie with a Revolution on-ride photo. Up next, we've got Mason and his mum on Icon. And then we've got Lewis with a Smiler on-ride photo there. Moving on then, we've got Reese and Chris on Wicker Man. And then we've got Rick at Negro Lands just there, part that I really want to visit. Then we've got Sophie with a Wicker Man on-ride photo. 
And then we've got Max and Logan outside Wicker Man there as well. Moving on next, we've got Oggy on, with an ice mountain on ride photo just there. And then we've got Cynthia and her boyfriend at Wallaby. So thank you very much for sending that one in. And then we've got Sean uh, with an Oblivion on ride photo just there. Great photo that. Up next then we've got Ryan and Lucy there at Oakwood. We've got Chris who had a picture with Charlotte, me, Alex and Harry. We've got Louis with a Wicker Man on ride photo. And then we've got the Sydney family on the roller coaster at Great Yarmouth. Such a classic that one. Then we've got Daisy who had a picture with me and Charlotte. Then we've got Warren who had a picture with Alex. Up next we've got Logan and Tula at Legoland. And then we've got Dan and Nikki on the New York, New York coaster in Las Vegas. Guys, a rough ride that one. We've then got Freya at the Mark Eaton Fun Fair just there. Next up then, we've got Chris and family at Europa Park by the big fountain there at the entrance. Love it, what a photo. Uh, up next then, we've got George at Paulton's Park. And uh, then we've got Alfie who had a picture there with me. It was good to meet you. We've then got Jacob at Alton Towers. And the final photo this week is from Peyton with an Oblivion on ride photo. Thank you very much to everyone that has sent you photos in. I look forward to seeing what we have next week. But now it's time for the birthday. So big happy birthday to Steve, Lewis, Kirsten, James Moore, uh, Abs, and also Daniel Thompson, who is 87. Wow, that is incredible. Thank you so much for watching Theme Park Worldwide. We're glad that you enjoy watching our videos. Of course, I'll be back next Friday with another episode of the Theme Park News Show. Every Friday at 5, hopefully, on Theme Park Worldwide. I'm Sean Sandbrook, and I'll see you in the next video. That means it's time to cue those credits. See you next week.